Hey guys and welcome to the video. Today I wanted to talk about Pi-hole and more specifically how you can use it to block ads on your home network. I recently did a video on NextDNS which is a similar tool to Pi-hole. Main difference being you are able to take more control of what you block when using a Pi-hole. Today we're going to be spinning up an Ubuntu instance running on Linode. If you're not familiar with Linode, they are a great cloud provider with a focus on customer service and ease of use. If you were a bit confused by my recent AWS EC2 video and feel intimidated by starting up machines in the cloud, I would highly recommend Linode and my subscribers even get a deal with them. If you sign up with the link in the description, you will get a $100 credit to be used on anything Linode. $100 goes a long way, and we'll be using Linode in one of my upcoming videos, so I would highly recommend clicking that link in the description. As always, make sure to like and subscribe. Only about 5% of my viewers are actually subscribers. It's free, it helps me get my videos out to more people, and I plan on posting a video every Saturday, so there's definitely more stuff in the pipeline. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be going to cloud.linode.com. Um, if you click the link in the description, then you're going to get $100 off within the first 60 days um, at Linode. So this project essentially will be free. I totally recommend it. My subscribers get a good deal with Linode. I like them a lot. Um, and we're going to use them in a lot of tutorials upcoming. So let's go ahead and choose our operating system here. What we're going to want to do is we're going to do the long-term service of Ubuntu. So we're going to do 20.04. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And next we're going to choose the region. I'm actually closest to Newark, New Jersey. You're going to want to choose the region that's closest to you. So let's say I have a lot of viewers in India. You're going to want to choose the one closest to you here. I believe, yeah, there's one from in Mumbai. So we're going to hit Newark, New Jersey. And for us, we, we're not really going to care about the um, RAM or the CPU because it's a very light program, uh, Pi-hole is. So let's go ahead and choose that $5 a month plan. That's going to give you one CPU and one gigabyte of RAM. Moving on, I'm going to label this um, Pi-hole Demo. And if you want to add more tags, you can do that as well here. I'm not going to. And the password, what I'm going to do is password one, super secure, don't do that. Um, this is just for demo purposes. And I'm gonna choose my SSH key. Now, I already uploaded my SSH key. I have the same SSH key on my Mac, on my Windows laptop, and my Windows desktop. Um, make sure you go ahead and upload your SSH key, or I believe Lenovo will generate one for you. All right, everything else, we should be good to go. We're just gonna hit create Linode. And our Linode is now provisioning. As you can see here, we see provisioning up top. We're gonna to wait for that to be active. Once it's active, what we're gonna do is we're gonna SSH into our instance, and then we're gonna be able to install PyHole on Ubuntu. So we'll just give that a second. And as we can see here, our PyHole instance is now running. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to the access section, and I'm gonna copy that SSH, SSH access. I'm gonna open up my terminal. My favorite terminal is Hyper Terminal. I like it a lot, I would recommend it. Um, and I'm gonna hit enter. Now it's gonna ask if you wanna add this to your host list. Um, basically whenever you SSH into a host, that host gets added to your SSH host list. So I'm gonna hit yes. And now we're in. As we can see, we're logged into the root account. First thing that I always like to do is just to update the repository. So we're gonna do sudo apt update, and we're gonna let that run. And now we can see there are 87 packages that can be upgraded. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the upgrade as well. And while we're waiting for this to upgrade, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for subscribing to my channel. We just passed 300 subscribers. It's really cool that we can do that in so quick a time. Um, if you know anyone else, who would like this content or who has been, you know, even just looking for pie hole stuff, make sure you send them this video. And also uh, sub to the channel would be great if you aren't already sub. so thanks for that. All right, and as we can see, our um, upgrades have finished. 
What I like to do is I like to reboot the system after we do any major upgrades. So I'm going to do that now with sudo reboot. And of course our connection is lost. Uh, that's just because, you know, the SSH connection kicked us out. So let's go ahead and wait for this to reboot. And once it's ready to go, we'll get down to installing Pi-hole. All right, and our instance is now back up. So I'm gonna go ahead and log back in or log back in. I'm gonna do clear so we have a fresh new screen. All right, so if you are looking for the installation script, um, I would recommend going to docs.pihole.net. I'm gonna have the link in the description. They have a super simple script and I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste that right in here. And it's gonna just run through some, you know, some stuff to get Pihole installed on this instance. It's gonna ask us a few triggers. We're gonna go through those together. All right, so what we have here first, this installer will transform your device into a network-wide ad blocker. Very cool, I'm gonna hit enter. The Pi-hole is free, but powered by your donations. All right, if you'd like to donate, I would totally recommend Pi-hole is a great uh, tool for everyone. I'm gonna hit enter. Pi-hole is a server, so it needs a static IP address to function properly. In the next section, you can choose your current network settings. All right, and what we're gonna do here is this is gonna tell Pi-hole where they want to route all the DNS traffic. Now, as you know, um, previously we used NextDNS. If you add NextDNS as your custom server here, which is what I recommend and what I do, then it's gonna go to NextDNS um, anytime that it can't resolve it from its own uh, block list. So I would totally recommend that. Right now, I'm just gonna go with uh, Cloudflare. And first off, it's going to ask you. This is the um, the list that the block list that automatically gets installed when you start Pihole. So we're going to choose that, and we're going to choose IPv4. And as you can see here, this is the current IP address of the instance. Don't try and access it after the video; it's going to be gone. Um, by the way, so yeah, it wouldn't be secure if I left it open. So I'm going to hit Enter and hit Yes. All right, it's possible you're right, I could still try to assign this IP to a device, which could cause a conflict. In most cases, this is not gonna be a problem, so I'm just gonna hit enter. All right, and then there's the IPv6 address to block ads. Super helpful if you have a router like a Google Wi-Fi router and you wanna use IPv6, so we're gonna hit enter. Do we wish to install the web admin interface? Yes, uh, we do, because that's where we're gonna be managing all of the Pi-hole stuff. I'm gonna hit enter. All right, do you wish to install the web server? Yes, we're gonna hit enter. Do you wanna log queries? Yes, of course, because we wanna see what, where our server's getting hit at. We're gonna hit enter. Select a privacy mode for FTL. Now, what this does is when a domain is blocked, it will show up in the blocked domains list. So this is saying, do you wanna show all domains or do you want to you know, hide domains, domain to clients, it's up to you. So I'm gonna hit show everything just so I can show you guys. Now the script is gonna finish up with some stuff and it should give us a URL to visit and also a password. So we're gonna wait for that. All right, so now we're on the installation complete page. This is good. If you get to this page, you've successfully installed it. So if you wanna view the web interface, we're gonna open this right here and I'm going to, I think I can just click it, there you go. I'm going to open it right here and I'm going to pull it over here um, and this is our login so I'm going to make sure to copy that as well and now we're on our Pi-hole web dashboard so let's go ahead and log in with that password and I'm going to hit remember me for seven days all right and here we are now going through the web admin dashboard there's some pretty cool stuff that you can look at um, right now, we only have 13 queries. Um, that's only because we haven't really connected any devices um, to this specific pie hole. So what I'm gonna do is, first up, you want to update the ad lists that are already included. So we're gonna go ahead to tools and we're gonna hit update gravity. We're gonna click update and it should just take a second. It's gonna show us how many domains were pulled for this specific block list. This is Stephen Black's block list. It's, it's actually a very good block list. Um, and it's gonna show us how many unique domains on that block list. So I'm gonna go back to the dashboard and you can see that up here. Now, in order to start using um, this pie hole, you can use it in several different ways. 
you can uh, you can set your router's DNS to the specific IP address, which is what I do on my home network. Or you can set um, you know your phone to this address. You can set your PC to this address. Basically, you can set anything to this IP address if you want to use these DNS name servers. And this is better than NextDNS only because you have more control over what block list you can add. NextDNS only has a few block lists um, and you also know exactly where the server is. So let's go through the dashboard. I'm gonna explain step by step um, what each tab is so that later on down the road, you should be able to you know, jump on pretty easy. So in the dashboard, what we're gonna see here is we're gonna see the total queries that have been made using these DNS servers. We're gonna see the queries blocked. The percentage blocked, usually a good DNS uh, server is going to block around 30% of all queries made. That's just because there's a lot of tracking, ad blocker, it's going to depend on everyone's you know different web browsing. We're going to look at query types right here. We have IPv6 and then IPv4. And then over here, we're also going to see the where how the query is being answered. So the block list is going to answer the majority of them once you have a more substantial block list. So what that says is when you go to a website, the handshake is made and the block list is going to filter out anything that's on it as marked as suspicious. Um, and then as well, you can see Cloud, uh, Cloudflare right here, 1.1.1.1 is going to answer some of the queries as well. You're going to see your clients down here. Now, if you have a public um, pie hole, you're going to see you know, a few random IP addresses. You really don't want to have a public pie hole um, only because there are way, there are security issues and it's not really, you know, not a good thing to do. Let's go down to the query log. Query log is going to tell us exactly where people are going on the network um, or, you know, wh what uh, queries have been blocked. So as you can see here, it's mostly just GitHub um, and that's, that's partly because of the script we're running and also because the block list that we have, the Steam Black block list, is going to be on GitHub. So whenever you update Gravity, it's gonna to go to GitHub, it's gonna pull down the latest block list, and it's gonna update. Long-term data, we don't really need to go over that. It's basically the same thing as the query log, except you can go back further. So what our whitelist is right here is that if you ever find that a website breaks, um, or if you ever find that, you know, you tried to unsubscribe from an email and it wasn't able to unsubscribe, um, then you're going to add that domain here as a white in the whitelist. Um, the whitelist is going to allow, you know, traffic to go to that domain. So for example, if I wanted to add, let's say, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that gets sent back to Apple. Um, so I'm going to add apple.com, but I'm going to add it as a wildcard. And what that means is that if apple.com is in the domain, it's going to be allowed. So I'm going to hit that right there. And you can see this turns it into a regex filter for apple.com. Now, if we go to the blacklist, the same thing uh, applies, but it's the opposite. So if I wanted to block, let's say I don't want, the, you know, my guests watching Netflix, uh, I could block netflix.com. And I'm going to add it as a wildcard. And as you can see, netflix.com is now blocked. If we go to the group management section, the way that groups, um, this is a little weird because you're going to have groups, clients, domains, and ad lists. Now your ad lists are where all of your um, blocking is going to be doing. So as you can see here, we have Stephen Black's host master block list. Um, and it's enabled right now. If we wanted to add more later on, we would put the URL um, right here and then we hit enter. And then we would update gravity and it would pull all the domains from that block list. Now you can disable, we don't really need to worry about that. Um, if you ever need to diagnose your pie hole, you can do so here. There's a few diagnostics you can run through. Um, obviously we don't need to do it now. If you ever need to update gravity, this is going to go to each black block list and it's going to pull the latest domains and then that'll add to your uh, block list. If you want to look at query list, you can find block domains in the list. Um, we haven't made enough queries here to do that. You can audit, um, you can download a log, you can generate a debug log, you can look at network stuff. Um, and then of course you have other settings here as well. 
Now the settings page is important because it's going to show you basically everything that you need to know. This is the um, IPv4 address, this is the IPv6 address, um, and then of course that's the Pi-hole hosting. Your ad list, that's just going to redirect you back to group management page, um, but your DNS is important. So here, this is where you're going to you know, use your upstream DNS servers. Um, right now we're using Pi-hole for IPv4. You can also use it for IPv6, but not very necessary. Um, if you ever wanted to use a custom one, like your next DNS, DNS servers, then you would put those in here and uncheck these. All right, um, and I think that's about it that we really need to go over. Make sure to hit the thumbs up and give a like if, if this helped you. Um, hit me up in the comments too if you have any questions or if you want clarification on something. But that should be all guys. I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.